Welcome to the Valley Advocate Podcast, featuring interviews that take us deeper into the people and happenings on the local scene. For more podcasts and a closer look at what's going on in the Valley, visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Hi, my name is Dave Eisenstatter. I am the editor of the Valley Advocate, and this is the Valley Advocate Podcast, which we do in collaboration with Amherst Media. I'm here with uh, arts and culture editor Gina Beavers. Yes, and we are here with John Clayton and Sharon Dunn from Hands Across the Hills, who just ventured to Kentucky uh, into Trump country, if you will. <laughs> That's right. right. And uh, have uh, supplied us with some terrific um, essays and articles about, about it. So thank you so much for being here, and we want to talk to you about that. Yeah, and um, I, I should just say that, so back in, gosh, I think it was January, um, we took on uh, an essay that John, you wrote with um, Sharon's help, and now we're we're um, we're running uh, Sharon's essay that you wrote about going going down yes. to Kentucky uh, with John's help, um, and uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about the premise of of um, how you got involved with Hands Across the Hills and what the Hands Across the Hills project is all about. This all started after the November 2016 election. Um, many people in Leverett were very upset and. Um, there was all this kind of despair and um, and almost hopelessness, mm -hmm. and people wanted to know what they could do. And, and um, the Leverett Peace Commission, which is for individuals in our our area, uh, called for a meeting at the local library, and about 70 or 80 people showed up. And um, we all brainstormed and put ideas on a whiteboard. And one of the ideas that cohered was a bridging committee that would bridge to an area in the United States that was um, somewhat similar to us, but had the opposite political um, uh, voting record. And um, so everyone liked that idea a lot. And one of our members, Jay Frost, um, uh, who actually had at the meeting broached that idea, the sister city, um, spent some time taking a look online to see if he could find um, a partner reading various articles and he read an article in um, Boy BillMoyers.com mm -hmm. that was written by a fellow named Ben Fink from Apple Shop which is an arts organization in Whitesburg, Kentucky. It's been around for about 50 years. That's Apple uh, for the Appalachians. Oh, okay. uh, Apple, yeah, Appalachian, Appalachian yeah, Shop. Yeah, Apple Shop. And um, uh, Ben, who's actually from Connecticut and is really an, an organizer, um, had lived down there for about two and a half, three years, and has uh, really been, in, in a way, accepted by the community down there. Um, but of course, his his voting was more like ours, and he said that when he woke up in Whitesburg on that morning, he heard gunshots, people were oh. celebrating, mm -hmm. and he kind of wondered what was gonna happen. And um, But he's found out that his um, Kentucky partners, the people he works with down there, just keep on collaborating on all their tasks, all their projects, and he felt like that he wanted to reach out to someplace else in the country that um, uh, um, that voted differently. And Jay wrote an email to him right away, and that's how it all got started. So we found a really active partner. I think that was a really important part of the whole endeavor for us, don't you think? Yeah. 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 And and so this so this place so uh, Whitesburg, Kentucky. Um, and you just went down there. Can you talk a little bit about kind of what it was like, what you saw there, and, and you know, the, the people that you met? Um, <clears throat> Whitesburg is the county seat for Letcher County, mm. and it's in eastern Kentucky. It is one of the richest coal districts in the whole country. Mm. Um, Rich as in, like, uh, it has a lot of coal. Profoundly yeah. deep, a lot of, coal. A lot of yeah. reserves, a okay. lot of reserves. By two minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Um, when we arrived there, um, uh, the town uh, was in somewhat of a valley. The mountains, when we arrived, when we were first driving into the county, we had taken um, air, uh, air, we flew by air into um, an airport that was two hours away. And but as we were driving in, the mountains were so beautiful, mm -hmm. and it was about um, the, it was very early spring with the trees just coming into bud, and the mountains there are very steep. They're very steep sided, and um, and the people mostly live in what they call the hollers in between right. the steep mountains. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so we we began to see that as we came in. And all the there's a lot of red redbud trees down there, and they were in bloom. And um, 
which was very beautiful. But as we drove into the, um, the town of Whitesburg, um, I saw a lot of uh, red brick buildings, and it reminded me of towns in New England. It mm -hmm. did not look that different to me at all. And um, uh, when and, and we were getting together with folks that had come up and spent a very long weekend with us up here in Leverett. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when was that? That was October. That was, that was October. October. Okay. And so yeah. the initial the initial perception of we're going to go to Trump voters mm -hmm. and we're going to go see Trump voters that broke down. And when they first came, it wasn't Trump voters, it was people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and you wrote about kind of some of the, the dialogues that when when they came up in October, right. there were um, about a dozen of them, right? And and, right. Uh, and you and, and you sat down and chatted about some stuff. I mean, c can you kind of describe what that was like? I mean, were there any, like, yelling matches or, how, you know? No, it was, it was the opposite. If anything, it was too kind. Too kind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, too, too. Do you think it was Southern, I'm sorry, Southern gentility? <laughs> well, kind of like that's a, interesting. there is some of that. Yeah. Um, but what, what we were doing is not talking about argument. We're not trying to argue. We're trying to find out who these people are individually and collectively and, and to treat them as people individually, not as, uh, as a position, a political position. Uh, a voting position, uh, and we started to to see this was an extraordinary group of people, um, self-selected. Um, they may not represent the average Kentuckian, mm -hmm. if there is such a thing, but uh, but they were beautiful people, people. And when we first we first saw them, they dressed differently. They were um, they they weren't they weren't they didn't look like us, hmm. and a after a while I thought, my God, this is uh, an extraordinary eloquent woman who's speaking. This is an extraordinary guy. This is a really interesting people, individually. So when they went down there, they already had a base for for talking to the people, and uh, I wish I had been there, but I hadn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so you you weren't able to go down, but Sharon, you you yeah. went, and um, was it the same? Was it more dialogues um, like it was in October up in uh, yeah. the Leopard area? I mean, really, the um, the heart of our um, growing connected was um, uh, the dialogue process, and part of. Um, the Peace Commission, which had originally um, called for this meeting at the library way back in December 2016, um, one of its uh, members is a woman named Paula Green, who has about 30 years of experience as a, a conflict resolution um, uh, mediator, not mediator, but um, uh, in conflict resolution and peace work all over the world. So she's worked with Israeli, Palestinian, mm. she's worked uh, in Rwanda, she's worked in um, uh, Burma. Uh, and in um, um, Bosnia, mm -hmm. so all it really uh, um, places where the kind of divisions are have been terrible and can continue often to be terrible. <clears throat> and she has a um, a process that she's actually also taught for a long time of dialogue, and it's a you work in a in a closed space in a circle, and um, there are certain guidelines for conducting discussion. And it's very private. It's very confidential. And um, she will ask um, a, a very carefully constructed question that is to elicit a response. Mm. Right. So to give you an example, when we first worked with, the, had our very first um, day together, after some getting to know you games that all kinds of groups do, um, we had an art activity together not a dialogue, but an art activity with scissors and paste and all that on the table. And Paula had asked us to uh, think about our family stories and especially our immigration stories. You know, what is our family story? And so everybody worked on that little squi white squares of paper. And then the intention was to take those squares and make banners out of them, mixing both communities mm. up. Mm. And so we actually have one now hanging in Leverett, and we brought one down to Kentucky with us. That exercise in family was the basis of the very first dialogue that we did. And um, Paula invited folks to tell their stories. And 
as stories were told, it was you heard Cole stories, stories about brothers dying, mm. it, the stories about sickness of children and, and lack of food. You also heard on the part of the Leverett folks many stories of the Holocaust, of, mm. of having lost family members. Ah. And um, that was uh, a very, um, that broke down a lot of um, resistance. Kind of resistance. That's a very good word. Um, and one of the individuals from Kentucky said, I, I never met an immigrant. And here, I mean, John's, John's parents were immigrants, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and my great-grandparents were immigrants. Of course, we all have our stories. Um, but the, the people in Kentucky, their, their folks came over to North America long, long, long time ago, many, many, many generations ago, and they've lost any immigration stories, whatever, whatsoever. So um, somebody said, you know, this, I feel like I'm meeting immigrants for the first time and realizing how much they contribute to our country. So that goes against everything, right. and all the anti-immigrant right. language that we've heard. And I'm know? sure there's some difference in their mind too, immigration in terms of a lot of people don't think of Irish immigrants or Italian immigrants um, versus right. immigrants of color. Right. So right. their, their view might have been directed towards immigrants of color, um, not realizing that Everybody's an immigrant. Every, Everybody is everybody's an immigrant. an immigrant. So, yes. and it's and it's so funny because that's such a hot button issue. Immigration, just it, very polarizing, and that was sounds like the very first thing that that you all were talking about. But not um, in a polarizing but, but not way. in a polarizing right. way, and kind yeah. of a okay, this is my story. These are this is your background story. Um, so that's that's fascinating. So yeah. and that that's the deeper politics. The deeper politics. It isn't who you voted for. But it's that sense of um, this, the sense of, of of understanding that that we have to be open to each other, and being open to each other, it, it, it can that is a politics. It's, mm. it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to it's hard for me to get this out. I uh, yeah. I mean, I what, I mean, this is. I feel like these stories of the past and kind of the, the idea of you know immigration or, or not immigration, you know, that's really connected to people's identity. And I wonder, um, I think a part of the identity of Kentucky and all of probably what's known as coal country mm -hmm. um, is, you know, I think what's probably hard for us up here to understand is why there is such that fierce connection to to coal, which. Um, Kind of, you know, I grew up learning about its uh, health, uh, you know, health problems associated with coal. That you, you know, you wouldn't think that the people who are actually mining coal would be standing up for coal so much. You'd think that they'd be the first people to kind of talk against that. But that's, but I imagine that's not what you guys found talking to them. Um, Herbie Smith, who is a filmmaker with this group called Apple Shop, and he was part of our group. In our dialogue circle, he said. Um, um, the men loved mining coal. Hmm. They bonded mining coal. They felt they were contributing to America mm -hmm. by mining coal, to building American industry, to helping win world wars, that, that, that it was a really honorable job to do. Right. So th that was a very much a part of, of, um, of really um, believing and wanting to continue to yeah. mine coal. And, that, and also tapping into that make America great again yes. mentality. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> with the uh, decline of coal, um, one of the things that's happened is that all the easily accessible coal has been mined in Letcher County, and so that the the coal that remains, which there is a great deal, mm -hmm. it it's much more expensive and harder to extract, and and the extraction is more by machines than right. it is by men. Right. And so because it's by machines, because it's by machines, there's much more dust, and because there's much more dust. There's much more black lung disease. The black lung disease starts earlier for the people who are still involved in coal production. Do, do you feel that uh, that the the people that you spoke to were sort of turning a blind eye to the health implications, or did they acknowledge that? Did they acknowledge that there were that um, that coal can make you sick when you breathe it in? Well, I think they they very well know that since so many of their brothers and fathers and sons yes. have yeah. been plagued with this and have died from it. 
Um, on the other hand, when someone in our group in the circle said, well, what about all the pollution of the streams, which is mm -hmm. a also a byproduct of coal production? They said, we don't think about that very much because we're concerned about feeding our kids. Mm. Mm. That's, yes. the, that's mm. the main thing on their minds. Is it's it's an, the absolute need to have money to buy food. Right. What is the other industry? Is there another industry there other than coal? Well, they're trying to build industries, and that was one of the things that um, I did see when I was down there, that there's a real, a real emphasis on um, developing um, new a new kind of economy mm -hmm. getting away from the mono economy of coal and um tourism is one thing that they're kind of exploring there's actually a wonderful outfitter shop already there they want to see people um you know kayaking but mm -hmm. they got to clean up those rivers right. i think you know yeah. mm. um uh there are beautiful waterfalls there um the mountains must be wonderful for hiking mm -hmm. you know um, so there is a possibility for that um they're hampered somewhat right now they do not have robust internet Ah, uh, yeah. and I which, think is, that, which is the yeah. case around here too, in yeah. some places. Yes, and that can that can hold some individuals back. Some people from Lever are actually working with people in Kentucky to try to to, sh to do what we did in Lever to get uh, broadband mm -hmm. uh, inexpensive and and robust. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far as you know, other industries, um, the most impressive. Um, one of the most impressive parts of the trip down there for me was that there was a, a, a celebration on the Saturday we were there that was about, we were celebrating the Letcher County Culture Hub. And this is something that Apple Shop has um, devised in the past two years under Ben Fink's leadership. And it's a network of 22 organizations in Letcher County. And they're all working on this issue of economic development and stability, and also through the arts. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, making of plays down there, which is another thing that I found so interesting. There are wonderful storytellers down there, and so the, these um, the theatrical the theater people go around and they do storytelling circles, and. The, which result in all this wonderful material about people's lives, mm. and then they put all that together. And so we were even thinking, could we bring that up here? I yeah. mean, could we have oh. them have a residency up here and and teach us about storytelling? One of the other funny things that happened when we were down there is that at one point Ben Fink led us in a storytelling circle after our dialogue mm -hmm. one day. So we all knew how to dialogue us with all of our kind of therapist brains or whatever, and and. Um, but Ben wanted us to tell stories, and so we went around the circle. The Kentuckians could tell a story that had a character, a setting, mm -hmm. and a bit of a narrative. You get to the people from Leverett, and we just were talking heads. You know, we just had our comments on this or that. And afterwards, I went up to Ben and I said, we didn't do very well, did we? <laughs> <laughs> Storytelling. <laughs> yeah, that could be a real export. I, I know, mean, right? Yeah. Oh, it's oh, could be important. That would be wonderful. And music was another thing that brought us together. Yes, Appalachian music. Um, I think, you know, everybody kind of has an yeah. idea about what that sounds yeah, like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So how did you how did you bridge the gap? Would, did you run into any conflicts? Were there any head to head conflicts? I know, John said it was very genteel and kind of you know. Um, resisted to to conflict, but did you find any any uh, like hot points? I can recount one story. It was Sunday over lunch. We had just visited a coal mine, and we were wow. had that experience was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And we were having um, lunch in uh, a converted abandoned schoolhouse that was been had been turned into an inn, and there was a very large room where they were uh, serving brunch, Sunday brunch. So um, one of our folks was there, Kip. And he, he was near Gwen, who actually is up, did visit us from Kentucky. She runs a community center down there mm -hmm. that, and a catering business. And um, a bakery she's called the Black Sheep. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they started talking about guns. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, uh, Kentucky culture, um, uh, guns are used for hunting, for hunting um, for um, animals that will provide you with meat and for food, and up here, um, we're more, you know, anti-gun completely, I would say. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, more, there's certainly um, a segment of our population up here that does hunt and is very serious 
hunters. Uh, again, just like the Kentuckians, but a lot of us in Leverett were pretty much wanted a lot more gun legislation, especially against assault rifles and a lot more background checks and everything. So anyway, the two of them went at it over lunch, mm. and they really, I, I did, was not privy to it. I was at a different table, but I heard, I heard the story of them, and they just went, and, and so Gwen says to Kip, you know, look around this room. I bet there are six guns in this room, mm. you know, and, and she says, I often, you know, I, I, I own a gun. It makes me feel safer. Mm. And for us, it makes us feel less safe to right. have guns. For me, anyway. I speak for myself. And was that something that, you know, was brought up and was resolved? Or was that something that was just kind of like, okay, these are, this is a different culture? They, agree, they both held firmly to what they yeah. believed and felt. And after lunch, they kind of like, whew, they, they got up and they were going to shake hands. And then that wasn't enough. And they hugged. Mm. Oh. You know, so, I mean, <laughs> okay. you know, you can agree to disagree. Yeah. yeah. You know, however, one of the, yes. the, one of the outcomes at the, at the end of our time was to talk about, well, what are our next steps? And one of them was that, um, that, that Leverett folks and Letcher County folks, um, the, a little team from each would work on gun legislation, hmm. tr um, saying here we are from two different areas of the country, and we both believe in X, Y, and Z, the things that they people could agree on. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think mm -hmm. that's pretty powerful if you come, powerful. come forward with that. You know, do do you feel like that there that this is kind of a a way forward? I mean, I think that a lot of people learn about other parts of the country just through reading about them or seeing them on the news or, you know, see, not actually going there and talking to people. Um, but logistically, that can be difficult to yeah. move around sure. in that way. I mean, do you feel like there's a, a future in a lot of these groups or more of these groups like that, that you've been a part of? And, and how do you think that that might work? Well, as far as believing in it, I mean, um, I feel like I've really experienced the power of face-to-face -face encounter, that it's very, very strong. Um, I feel like it's, there's nothing that can replace it. Uh, I feel that face-to-face -face encounter takes away the, or puts aside for a time, the voices of the media mm -hmm. and the voices of politicians, so that people can really encounter one another. And uh, if they're really deeply listening, which is a, a, a very important part of the dialogue process, really listening, that you really can can learn, and if something comes in. Um, what the future of it, since it is difficult to travel to different parts of the country, that's, that's hard to say, but I hear of more and more people that are interested in face-to-face -face encounters. And you have um, the Better Angels movement, which is much more local, doing face-to-face -face encounters of, of people in a, in, in a divided situation. Um, so, uh, and I know that as far as Hands Across the Hills goes, that we're exploring different initiatives, both um, in Massachusetts and um, out of New England. Mm. So we're going to continue to go forward. So you might find other partners yes. other than Whitesburg. Yes. OK. Right. Mm -hmm. And it might it might be us and Letcher County going right. to a oh, third so place. So like the kind of the snowball yeah, really gets going. Yeah, really interlinking it and, and helping it go on, you know? And in the meantime, there's Zoom. <laughs> Which is? <laughs> uh, Zoom, uh, it's a program to allow 14 or 15 people to talk all at the same time oh, yes. on okay. screens and uh, and then to it's an internet to platform frame the one who's talking okay and, yeah and be able to see each other so that's we've done that and that's that's not perfect but it's wonderful yeah we've done that Amazing. as a whole group thing with all of the Kentuckians as as many as we could get together and and most of us in Leverett um, talking just like a week ago, and then individual groups. I had another group. Uh, we're talking about, um, you know, expanding the dialogues to other geographical areas, and there was five of us together talking about that, looking at each other. So that was wonderful. You know, like the future. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, definitely keep us up to date definitely. on uh, on on how it all progresses. I, um, yeah, we will. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much for Thank coming in. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and don't forget to visit us at valleyadvocate.com.